has the physical size of the Mercedes S-Class, but what it doesn't have is the damn interior refinement. Italian-American friends. This has a yeah. back massage on it. Yeah, a back massage, huh? Look at this. It's electronic. Yep, these go up and down. But I'm, I'm actually surprised there's no button to make them actually go up and down. Like, this, unless, I don't know, I, I know they had a remote control. Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking. I was thinking about getting one of these because we have an STS and yeah. it's getting older. But that XTS is the one that's the size beneath this. It's that blue one right there. All right. I'll that's the one that, that all the limo guys drive in. Yeah, it's like fifty-five thousand with a V6. You know. How much is this? This is starts at fifty-seven, and with all this stuff in it, you're talking like. And this was the STS. No, you know what? This is all. This is brand new. Brand new. It, it's basically like a large, a large platform. XTS to some extent, you know? But I, I, was, I was thinking about either this or that, you know, to upgrade, you know? Or even one of those, because that's actually cheaper. That's the SRX, but the thing about it is, yeah, I mean, this is nice, but it ain't no Mercedes S Class, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. If you're not paying 140. There you go. There you go. No, 110. But, you know, 110. There you go. Wow. Yeah, it's nice, though. French. What were you looking for? No, they had everything up in French. <laughs> French. Yeah. Well, now it's back. Maybe it changed. Maybe it Yeah, 
got the Batman Throwing Star Cadillac logo. CT6 has some impressive technology, but ultimately it's going to be the XTS that, well, and the XT5 that are going to be the volume sellers. I mean, that's 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 just what's going to happen because most people are going to want that crossover ability. They're going to want that higher ground clearance and they're going to want that all-wheel drive. So the CT6 will sell to these limo luxury Uber companies, but, you know, just like the XTS is. The XTS is probably the best. It's probably the better option. But, you know, it's obviously not going to get as much technology as a CT6 says, you know, especially in that back seat. But I, I really think I'd be better off just going for an XTS instead of a CT6. It's like, well, we'll, we'll see what happens. I can't see myself driving no, an Escalade. I can't that's afford the damn thing. <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. <laughs> okay, well, I think I'm almost done here. time I mentioned this Cadillac CT6 I was at the New York International Auto Show so basically now they've started arriving on the dealer lots and this is a Cadillac CT6 so first of all the first thing I got to say is I've been arguing with people online about the Cadillac CT6 and the Lincoln Continental I have a large problem with these cars. Number one, they don't have a V8 option. Some people are saying, oh, well, you don't need a V8 because it's got all aluminum construction. And if it's got all aluminum construction, that means it's like less weight and everything. And if it's got less weight, then you don't need as much power. You don't need as much power. Um, I don't know if any morons know anything about car sales. But the simple fact of the matter is that we're not just selling these cars in America. These cars are being sold worldwide. And there are people who have so much money that the thought of gas prices don't even matter to them. I want you to go and ask Mercedes-Benz why is it that they don't have a V6 twin turbo in their S-Class. You could ask Mercedes-Benz why is it that you guys don't put the same V6 from the E-Class into the S-Class. It would still be enough power, wouldn't it? There's a reason why they don't do that. It's because the demographic that actually has the money to buy these cars wants a V8 engine. Not only do they want a V8 engine, but they want uncompromising luxury. They don't care about gas prices. They just want the car, and they don't care how much it costs. They're going to buy it anyway. They're going to pay for it. So, this is a... This is a, uh, what, what's the color on this thing? This thing's $63,910, so obviously it's more expensive than an XTS, but if you get the XTS Platinum, it's a, a couple of dollars less because I think that lists for about 65. If you get an XTS V, that goes up to about 70. Now, in my opinion, you really don't need that much power to speed in these cars, but the thing about it is when you load these cars down with people and weight, some people might feel that the torque that comes from these V6s isn't enough power, especially if they want more passing power on the highway. So, ultimately, what are you getting? You're getting an Enhanced Vision Comfort Package 2025, 
rear view camera mirror, which I actually like. That was pretty cool. Ultra view sunroof. Okay. Heated rear outboard seats, ventilated front seats. Basically, they had made a nice massage button function in these cars. And the thing is $63,910. Looks good. Looks pretty good. Then they have um, the Batman throwing star from uh, that movie, The Dark Knight Rises. And you can use that to, you know, defeat like evil doers. Yeah, this is the big one. They said they had two of them. This is the really big one. I, I was thinking about this or the XTS, but uh, it's nice. It's really nice, right? Oh, what, what color is the one inside? Oh, no, they don't have oh, yeah, that. Same as Hmm. Okay, so there's that interior. See, here, this is what I'm talking about. People who want to try to say that this is an S-Class competitor, you're fooling yourself. I mean, they they have to, GM, you have to get rid of the plastics. Now, I'm not saying I hate your cars, because it's not true. I like your cars. But the problem is you got to get rid of the plastics where I can see them. It's amazing that when I get into like one of these new Genesis models, it's like you get into a Genesis, you get into an Equus. They figured out ways to make the fit and finish and cut of the interior of their cars in a manner where you do not see the plastic cheapness. Now, the video I made at the auto show had a CT6 that had uh, the rear TVs and it also had the um, reclining back seats. If I was going to sit in this thing, that's how much leg space you'd have behind me. It's pretty good, actually, if you look at the leg space. It's not too bad, right? pretty decent leg space now this one doesn't have all the options this one has pretty much the major tech options and it is pretty damn spacious it's pretty pretty spacious but my only thing is the materials inside it, it feels to me like a stretched XTS. And I hate to say that because there's always somebody who wants to argue, oh yeah, well, you don't know what you're talking about. It's not just a stretched XTS. They got aluminum construction and everything in it. There was this guy, Caddy Man, every single time I make a video about a Cadillac, this dude's arguing with me. Arguing, arguing, arguing. And and I'm trying to under, I'm trying to make you understand, like, you know, really this these cars actually remind me a lot of Audi's. And most people would probably argue that. They'd be like, oh, yeah, well, this thing's got an interior that's nowhere near as good as Audi, blah, blah, blah. But the thing about it is it feels to me a lot like an Audi. It feels kind of generic. That's I get, And that, that's the best way to put it. it. It feels a little bit generic. And in being generic, basically, I guess the best, I mean, it, it, it's like I, I think Cadillac could do more. You know, I, I think if if they were to go whole hog, that they could really make this car into an S-Class competitor and possibly even they could, if they really put their mind to it, they could make a better car than the S-Class. Now, I know that sounds crazy because the problem is Mercedes S-Class owns this entire segment. The BMW 7 can't sell anywhere near enough cars to compete with the S-Class. The Audi A8 is a joke in North America. It's an absolute joke. Jaguar XJ was a great, nice car, but the problem is it was just too small because the head roof, the, uh, the headline, it was just a little too low. I can say, if you're a big guy, like if you're like two meters tall, you know, some people in other countries, they use the metric system. I can say that you will fit comfortably in this car. This car is like a boat. And you don't need to race anybody in a car like this. It's just that people who buy a car like this want to have effortless power. And that's the reason why a V8 is just pretty much unchallenged, especially like when you're talking about effortless power. And it, it could be something small like a 4.2 or 4.6 liter. Or how about the North Star? How about you take the best North Star with the best reliability and you take that and you drop it into here. So as you can see, you got heated and cooled seats right here. Well, I'm sorry, you got the heated and cooled seats button is right here. So that's the cooled button, heat button, heated back. So you can heat the back rest and you can heat the pad independently. That's pretty smart. 
cooled seat. This is the fan speed up and down. Automatic. This uh, when you when the when the car is fully activated, it'll um, go into automatic mode. This is the new touchpad, and I kind of demonstrated this because right now I'm really just showing you what this interior space is like. And uh, you know, that's this is the front seat of the car, but it's really really it's pretty spacious. It's like sitting. It's kind of like just sitting in the S class or one of the like the BMW sevens. It's very spacious. And there's the parking brake. There's the light dimmer. And um, and pretty much, it's it's pretty straightforward. If you own an XTS, you basically have already felt what it's like to sit in this car. The difference comes in that back seat, and that's what this car is all about. The back seat of this car is what this car is all about. So let's take a look back there. You take a look back here. Now I'm not gonna like I'm gonna leave this chair just like I would have normally left it. As you can see, you have the heated button for the rear seat, heated backrest, heated pad and backrest. Please tell me this is not an ashtray. Oh my god, it is an ashtray. You people better stop smoking before lung cancer gets you. Okay, you have this rear shade here. Okay. Let's let's do that again. Real shade, real shade. There you go. You people better stop smoking. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's basically an XTS with a lot of leg room. Now, rear seat space. I didn't change the position of the passenger seat. I have pretty, I probably have a good amount of leg space. I have a good amount of foot space right there this one does not have all the you know the luxury features because a lot of these things just started getting delivered and they're not you know fully function in most cases just yet but uh feels very comfortable see one thing you'll notice right here if you look at this uh roof line my head right now is in this area of the roof line because what they did was because to accommodate the moon roof what they did was they have like a hump right here and that hump makes it so that your head basically, like you gotta look at the top of my head. Like this is my head right there. Yeah, don't laugh, don't laugh. So anyway, that's the top. That's what it looks like. So if you're sitting in the back of this, this is a big Cadillac, and that's exactly what people who buy a Cadillac expect. They want a big Cadillac. The XTS has been a, a good sale for Cadillac. But now a lot of people are moving into crossovers. So the SRX and the XT5 will actually do a lot better than the large sedans. But I really think that this car actually probably will sell pretty well. It's just a shame that they don't put more luxury tech into it. And when I say luxury tech, I'm talking about V8 engine. They really, really, really need to do that. So this way there can be no argument as to the fact that you can still get an optional V8 if you want it. And there's just, it's it's important to have options. Options, options, that's the thing. Like for instance, if this was a Mercedes or BMW, which I made a video about the new seven series, I wouldn't have to do this right here. You see this? If I'm wealthy, I shouldn't have to do any manual labor whatsoever. That right there, having to lift this up and hook this in there, that's manual labor. I'm not supposed to have to do any of that. I'm supposed to be able to push a button and that's it. I'm supposed to be able to push a button and have the car do the rest. That's what I'm supposed to be able to do. And if I have to do any manual labor whatsoever, there's a problem. Because wealthy people do not have to do manual labor. That's part of being wealthy. So. Pretty nice car. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty freaking cool, man. Wealthy people do not have to do manual labor, and that's part of being wealthy. So why, 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 oh why, don't they have an automatic shade? But, um, you know, they've, they've put some work into this. It feels like they stretched an XTS. I, I can't say it any better than that. It feels like they took an XTS, and they put more leg room in the back. They put this new mirror here. And uh, they, you know, gave you options for rear TVs and all the other stuff that you could have gotten in the XTS. You know, heated seats are nice, but I would like to see heated and cooled seats with massage for the back seat. I'd like to see that damn near, like, I'd like to see that as a uh, standard. You know, maybe I ask for too much, but the way I see it is, 
When you sell a car like this, you're supposed to have everything. There should be no, you know, this should be like basic options, but there's certain things that you should just have, you know? But um, limousine companies and livery companies, they're gonna run these things mostly. But the average retiree is going to buy an XTS. The average retiree, let me turn it off. The average retiree is going to, uh, they're just gonna buy an XTS. You no, know, because the XTS ultimately makes more sense. Shit, you turn this damn thing off. Yeah, the, oh yeah, I know what it is. But yeah, most retirees are just gonna buy an XTS, I think. For most people, the XTS four wheel drive will be the one that makes the most sense. I mean, 52,000 or so, great interior, very spacious. The average person who's only less than two meters tall will find the XTS and the Buick LaCrosse to be relatively perfect cars for them. But um, I have to say, you know, Cadillac is making some pretty good cars. It's just that I, I want to see them take the next step. I want to see them make take things to the next level. You know, and in order to take things to the next level, they're going to have to start thinking bigger and they're going to have to start thinking more big options. And, and you know, they're just going to have to do a little bit more to attract people my age who have the money to spend on a car like this. trying to be quiet so you know anybody who's watching can kind of experience exactly what I'm experiencing I don't really do quiet though I do loud <laughs> so basically what have we got now like basically I split my video up into three parts because uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make it so that I could make um, exterior view car show view interior re uh, review and then i can do a test drive and this way if i split it up into different parts i can advertise each individual part and then when i put it all together i can make like a huge montage so this way i'll have five videos instead of just one that's the way that you maximize your youtube monies so look at this what we have here we have uh two usb ports look at that that's nice two usb ports you have a my jeep has the same thing it has the power inverter right here well they have an ac power inverter and then they have a cigarette lighter socket that's actually a pretty decent nice placement for it right that looks pretty good and uh this car unlike the one that i did at the car show does not have the rear reclined seats so as you can see there's a hell of a lot of leg room in the back and as i showed you with the other car yesterday there's a bump in the top where you can put your head so that this way if you have like uh, if you're a pretty tall guy this back of this car would be perfect for let's say four six foot five adults okay so cadillac has dealt with their headroom pretty well in this car which is a really good thing. And um, most of the materials look pretty decent. It's just that the lower materials, I mean, yeah, granted most cars, like if you look at an Audi A8, you're gonna see pretty much the exact same thing. There's gonna be plastic lowers. And as you get higher, it turns into luxury wood and it turns into leather. Um, so basically, you know, it, it really feels a lot like an Audi product in some respects. 
Now, most people who are Audi buyers would probably try to argue with me, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, there's nothing like an Audi, blah, blah, blah. But uh, the thing about it is it, it kind of feels like an Audi because of, like, the design is bold, but the thing about it is it doesn't go far enough. Like, the design doesn't scream out Cadillac, you know? And a lot of the other GM cars are going to be designed very similarly. So that means that... Um, you know, whichever one you get, most of the other GM high-end cars are going to be a lot like this. So, once again, these are the headrests. This, when you tilt it up and forward. See, the one at the car show had a button right here for the massage seats. This one does not have the massage seats. And then these are the memory seats right here. So, that's set memory one, two. And then right here is another button. Look, if you can see that. I'm trying to work on the macro shots with this 4K. So this way everybody can see all of the details as well as possible. Now, once again, a lot of people have asked me what camera did I use to record my video? And I tell them, yeah, I'm using the um, iPhone 6S Plus. And the 6S Plus has obviously 4K and you can also use 1080p at 60 frames per second. Okay, so basically before you ask I just want to let you know so you have the uh, left and right mirror button here mirror control unlock lock Then you have windows lock windows lock window comes with a light Okay Parking brake lighting interior light control Okay heated steering wheel uh, voice uh, control all right, so everything's pretty uh, good. So now let's talk about the Q system. Okay, so the new big thing in the Q system is the fact that it has a touchpad. The touchpad also has some form of bumper feedback. You can probably hear it. And it reminds me a lot of the BlackBerry Storm. Like, I don't know, probably nobody actually used that phone, but it was one of the last phones that BlackBerry made until they realized they couldn't compete with iPhone. It has a simple back touch button to go back but this is not capacitive touch you actually have to push it and if you look at that I don't know how long that piece right there is gonna last because if you look at it you hear that see this this is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Cadillac having to increase the material yeah I mean this is what I'm talking about it speaks for itself now the CTS had a sliding cup holder cover so I guess they abandoned that with this car even though this is the bigger car and they could have put that in here with lots of space to spare but um they abandoned that in this car did they really need it not in my opinion i would have preferred if they had had a uh, headrest where you did you had a button on the side like in the mercedes e-class or the hyundai genesis strangely enough where you didn't have to push this and, and push up and down so you know it's like cadillac they engineer stuff in the car that really doesn't need to be engineered but that's just what they do so here you go you have the camera pushing camera nothing's happening right now okay traffic button that shows your traffic typical of a nav traffic system and you go back now if I want to I could also use this touchpad to go back and forth and it seems like it's pretty fast let me try to enter a navigation direction and see that the thing about it is if you're moving along in the car it's actually easier to reach up and just touch that than it is to reach down here and try to slide your because first of all you got to figure out where it is now after a while muscle memory will kick in and you'll be able to figure out where it is real quick but the only thing about it is it's like this thing doesn't seem it, it slides around look at that and it has a haptic feedback thing which to me is kind of annoying like yeah you can slide it quick like that but when you try to do the fine motor controls, you can see, if you try to do fine motor controls on it, like let's say if I want to get to 103.5, right? Okay, so that's 103.5, and I want to go here. Let's say I want to go to 1010 winds. Okay, now let's say if I want to go to, uh, um, I don't know, let's say I want to go to navigation. Yeah, you gotta kind of. It's kind of funny. You gotta push this thing. You gotta put more so much pressure into the damn thing. <sighs> nav, okay. So that's your nav. Has a. You can just keep touching it, and it gives you a multi-view points, 3D, 2D. 
Okay, which is kind of good because that, you know, that could help somebody. Mostly anybody who drives a car like this is probably going to use the 3D view um, isometric. So this way, you know, they see what's coming up next. So let's go to phone. Now, really, with most of these cars, phone dialing is, most people are just going to use their phone. Like, even though the whole point of these technologies is to try to keep the phone out of your hand, most people are really just going to use the voice dial button if they can. Like, for instance, they push that button right there and they'll try to dial for the voice control. Now, this is the gauge cluster. Okay. And uh, that looks pretty cute right there. So basically, you know, it's funny. When I was at the car show, if you watch my video from the car show, there was uh, someone who said this car was too Guido. Now, I, th I think really most older Americans who grew up with Cadillac and Lincoln, they're gonna like this car a lot. They're really gonna like this car, but um, you know, it's just a couple of things in here that just needed to be done a little bit better. It almost feels like the car was a little rushed, kind of. Um, okay, so that's home. Projection, what's that do? To use this future, can I, okay, so I know the new systems come with Apple CarPlay in the new GMs, so that's good. That's a good thing, because Apple CarPlay mimics on the screen your Apple device, which is good. And uh, the camera doesn't obviously work unless the car is active. So let's just turn on the uh, auxiliary and see what that looks like. Okay, it says push brake to start. I don't want to do that because I'm indoors. So let's try this. Uh, nothing on the camera. Text, SMS, texting. So you can text from right here if you have a phone paired. Okay, so as you know, there's a heated and cooled seats and everything. All this stuff only comes on when the car is on because it needs extra power. Glove box. Okay, parking sensors for the rear, parking sensors for the back. Okay, all well, that looks pretty good. Okay, you know, really, this car is really about the back seat, it's not so much about the front seat, it's all about the back. Now, up here, you have the home link buttons, you have uh, three home links I'm trying to zoom in, it's a little dark in here. You have three home link buttons right here one, two, and three. Then right here you have the tilt for the uh, mirror uh, window. And uh, on top of that you have, oh, okay, that's the, uh, oh, that's the shade. So you can control the shade independently. Okay, so that's the shade. And then the slide roof is the next two buttons. And then they have this button right here for recirculate air. So the car can actually do that, that's pretty good. Then you have these buttons right here, LED lighting. Okay. Power tilt and slide. Okay, so that's all that. Okay. As far as these materials go, this looks kind of like the carbon fiber trim that they put in most cars, but it's actually gold. It looks really, really good. It looks really, really nice. It stretches all the way around. And you know, I already showed you what the back seat of the car looks like. There's uh, obviously that center pass through right there. So with some packages, you may see a, uh, what is it called? A, a, a cooler or a refrigerator or a wine cooler back there. But um, basically you can kind of see just from how much space there is in these seats that these, this is a really spacious big car. And there's a lot of ceiling height, but it's a really, really spacious car. So this is this will be perfect for a lot of older, like taller, people who just want a lot of space but they don't want to step into one of those escalades right there because it's just too big so this will be really perfect for them and they've also changed all these buttons right here like they i, I kind of felt a little bad that they went to plastic instead of the look that they had for the last generation with that black gloss but um ultimately it works out pretty well and the thing about it is you're dealing with octogenarians so you have to make the buttons large and easy for them to understand so basically, that's pretty much it. If you have any GM car, you already pretty much know how the Q system works. The only real addition to the new Q system is the widescreen display and the uh, touch panel. And I, I'm not really happy with this touchpad. I think it's actually easier to just reach up and hit this right there. I think it's easier to reach up. But the problem is, it's like everybody tries to copy what Audi and Mercedes-Benz are doing. And that finger-writing hand, that finger-writing gesture bullshit that Audi tried to start in the A8, it was a stupid idea from the get-go. But, uh, you know, some, some, you know, it, it's, you, you can't argue with them. So anyway, we got, we got these up and down buttons right here. Look at that. 
with these up and down pads. Let's see what we find out what these do. Okay, these up and down pads are for the lumbar. So the power lumbar settings are those big D pads right here. So when you push this up, the top lumbar powers up and it deflates or inflates when you push up and down, left and right changes the power lumbar inflator in the seat. So I can show you that right here, like with this pad right here. If you look closely, Okay, there you go. Now, if you have a fully optioned model, this is a Panerai 32-piece Bose system right here. This pops up, and uh, kind of like Audi, you know, they love copying Audi. And um, you get uh, tweeter sound or subwoofer sound from up here because it's 32 speakers. Like there's one over there, there's one right here, there's one over here. But when you also have a fully optioned, you get massage seats, heated and cooled seats all around. And... Um, you know, they have it optioned. As, they try to option as much as you can get a Mercedes S-Class optioned. But the problem is that Mercedes S-Class just feels like a better product. You know, so yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a very damn good looking car. And in its price range, it's probably at the very top of the segment at its price range. So the only problem is now we have to wait and see what the Lincoln Continental has to offer. Because when I saw those Lincolns at that car show, even though you couldn't see the Continental... The Navigator was so amazing until I can't wait to see what Lincoln is going to do in order to compete. And this is the competition. New interior. Oh man, how could you compete with this? <laughs> there is no competition with this. The S-Class owns this market for one good reason. It doesn't compromise. That's the attitude that I like. No compromises. Because when you start to compromise, you end up in a situation where you're always going to be behind. When you make it so there's no compromises and nobody can compromise with you, you create a situation where what you say goes. No compromises ever. You see this powered headrest Cadillac? You should have that. See that? That shit goes back and forth. Oh my goodness. It goes it goes forward, it goes back, it goes up, it goes down. No compromises. See this? You see these backrests Cadillac? Do you see this? You see that? No compromise. You see that? You see this seat cushion? See how that goes forward and back? Cadillac, you see that? No compromises. Don't compromise, ever. Now granted, underneath, you know, this lovely luxury... Oh my goodness, look at this shit. See, the one that we least didn't even have all this shit. Jesus. They keep redesigning these things. I mean, oh my goodness. No compromises. No negotiation. You know how the government, the U.S. government says we do not negotiate with terrorists? Well, that's how you gotta be. No compromise. This is a back seat. This is what, you see Cadillac, you see this? This is what a back seat's supposed to look like. When you make your back seat like this, then they'll come. You see that? See that? You see how I'm reclining the hell out of myself? You see this? I'm reclining the hell out of myself. I got a headrest. I, I, got, I got nothing but headspace. Look at this. I got headspace like crazy. Look at that. Look at this. You see these, uh, you see these light fixtures in the back? For the people, for the women who are trying to do their makeup. You see that? No compromise. You see that? That's what that's what it means not to compromise. That's what a luxury car is supposed to be about. Hey, 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 Cadillac, you know what they got under that uh, hood up there? You know what they got? They got a V8 engine up there. They got a V8 engine. You know all those European gas taxes and all that nonsense that you guys are trying to meet? And that's the reason why you don't have a V8? Yeah, well, Mercedes came from Europe, and uh, they ain't worried about gas taxes. They ain't worried about V6s with turbos in them for a car that weighs like this much. They ain't worried about none of that. This is this is no compromising. That that's what that's what no compromising means, and that's the reason why you don't know how to compete because you compromise and they don't. Yeah.
Maybe I should just get one of these instead. <laughs> get, a, get one with this interior, luxury interior. Hmm. See this Cadillac? I want you to take a really good look at this because I'm going to tweet. I'm going to tweet you, Cadillac. I'm going to send this to your Facebook. And I'm gonna, cause I, I'm starting to wonder if you ever saw the inside of this. Maybe you didn't. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you don't know what the frame of reference is. Maybe you don't understand why this car owns this entire segment. Maybe you don't understand it. Maybe you don't understand it because you've never been in this car. Maybe that's what it is. So I, I guess I have to give you the benefit of the doubt. See this? No compromises, Cadillac. Stop compromising. Do not negotiate. I don't care what anybody, if, if somebody tells you, they say, yeah, well, we can't have a V8 engine. I want that person fired immediately. Stop compromising. Because when you compromise, you come up short every single time. This is no compromises. See that? The interior of this thing looks like a goddamn spaceship from the future. A spaceship, I tell you. See that? Cadillac, I want you to take a good look. Take a good, long look. And I want you to understand the reason why you're having so much trouble selling your cars and they're not. Now, I want you to also understand, your car costs, what, 70000 Their car costs 100000 But their car is killing other cars that cost less money. So the question is why? You know why? Because they don't compromise. You know how I told you about the word sensibility with the Dodge Charger? Well, this word, today, the today's word is compromise. Stop compromising. Because the more you compromise, the more you lose. Cadillac XTS, and it takes me a second just to think about what the damn letters for the car is. The Cadillac XTS is exactly what older people expect to walk into Cadillac to buy. And this is exactly what they expect to drive out with. They expect to drive out with a big Cadillac. The ATS is not what they expect to drive out with, but if they are interested in a small Cadillac because they realize right away that the CTS and XTS are fifty-five dollars or $56,000 with the equipment that they want, they end up going for the ATS, acquiescing to the lower price. Now, this is what people used to buy when they wanted a Cadillac. And when you understand why they wanted something like this with, what does it say? A North Star V8. They walk into Cadillac now and they ask, hey, does that XTS right there come with a North Star? At which point Cadillac responds, no, it doesn't because we don't have V8s anymore. And then they wonder why it is that their cars depreciate so quickly. So basically, I considered the CT6 and I said, no, it was much too large. We live in New York City, Manhattan. You can't park a car like that very easily. So basically the choice came down to XTS or CTS. And to tell you the truth, we weren't really feeling the CTS that much. I mean, it's a great car. It's nice and spacious up front. It's just not that spacious in the back. But as you probably know, if you're into cars, the market has quickly been being taken over by crossovers. Crossovers trade height for length. So wherein you used to, you know, buy a really long ass Cadillac like that, now you don't get them long, you just get them tall. You get something that's the length of a CTS on stilts. And those stilts make all the difference because you have more headroom. You get the same equipment, you have more headroom. And this car is quickly gonna be replaced by the X-T5, which is going to offer everything basically to the CTS, ATS, and XTS and CT6 offers and that's just where it is so basically the uh, entire campaign that I've been waging for so many months has come to an end I waited for the CT6 and I wasn't extremely impressed so I decided instead of going for a CT6 I'd do a two-year on this SRS so this right here is a black Cadillac CT6. Uh, and while I'm making constant videos of the CT6 to show off as much of the technology as I can, as you can see, this has a heads-up display. 
um, basically I've made a number of videos because I wanted to show off the different colors the different types of interiors now as you may know some of you who watch my channel will know I'm about to leave and I'm about to go to uh, what is it called Colorado in order to uh, critique prototype vehicles unfortunately I won't be allowed to make videotape and I won't be allowed to take any pictures because as you know they're you know they're prototype vehicles but what I will do is I will make a little video about uh, you know my first time in Colorado so uh, the F uh, what is this the CT6 they got all these stupid letters it's so hard to remember anything I keep thinking XTS for some reason and it's hard to remember to call the CT6 without calling the CTS sooner or later Cadillac and Lincoln are gonna figure out that they got to get rid of these stupid letters I mean the letters are just ridiculous at this point it's so hard to remember anything so anyway this is the CT6 luxury all-wheel drive 2016 and as you can see it's sixty thousand three hundred ninety five dollars and with a few package options such as enhanced vision and comfort rear view camera mirror ultra view sunroof and then the v ventilated front seats and cargo net for 60 bucks as you can see it comes to sixty two thousand four hundred eighty dollars so basically the CT6's real interesting points are in its back seat, not its front seat. The front seat is basically, give or take, the same thing you'd find in an XTS. Now, if you're a really big person, like say if you're Shaquille O'Neal, this is the kind of Cadillac that you'd want to get. So, you, And when I say big person, I'm talking about, you're, let's say you're taller than about two meters, or let's say you're about two meters tall. If you're a big person, this is exactly what you'd expect out of a Cadillac. So what you see right here is the heated seats and it's separated into two buttons. You have a heated backrest and you have a heated seat cushion right here. So pushing this button changes the temperature for the backrest and this one only changes the temperature for the cushion. Would there have been a simpler way to do that using only one button? I'm pretty sure they could have come up with something. Perhaps a combination of buttons and lights, but uh, I guess they weren't interested in uh, you know, saving space. Now, in the uh, auto show, I showed you the fully loaded version of this that came with the backrest televisions and it came with the uh, full back seat package which included the reclining seats. Basically, a CT6 without the reclining seats really doesn't make much sense. It's like, if you really need more space than the XTS, which in my opinion, most people wouldn't because unless you're driving around with a bunch of people who are really tall, you probably wouldn't need this much space for a back seat. But if you are going to go this far, what you really should have is the reclining seats. It doesn't make sense to have this car and not have the reclining seats. That I just can't understand. If you're going to go for a car this big, you might as well have an executive seat package. So they have simple cubby storage holes right here. And oddly enough, they put the USB and they put the charging systems, they put all that stuff right here in the middle of the uh, seat cushion, which I'm actually surprised that they did because the thing about it is most people, if they've got a cell phone, they're going to obviously put it right here. So it seems to me that they would have put all that equipment somewhere around here or made it so you could plug it in somewhere around here, but that's not what they did. So this part was actually pretty nicely engineered. So let's see that one more time. That's actually pretty nice right there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's all plastic, but you know, that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting, right? So you just push it forward and it just slides out and it pops up. That's really nice actually. I like that. Okay, so that's it. There's really nothing to talk about in the back seat at all. The back seat is plain Jane. The front seat has a lot of space. Like I, this is how I was sitting in it. As you can see, like I was lounging in it because like when I sit and drive a car like this, or say an S-Class, I lounge out as if I'm laying down in the car. Like I lay down. Nobody can really sit behind me. But if you have a car like this, people can actually sit behind me. So what they finally got smart and did was put the seat controls on the door. This way you don't have to reach under your backside to uh, have access to them. In the model that I showed you at the auto show, there was a massage seat function button here and um, the heated and cooled seat buttons, which I'm really surprised they didn't put over here, are still right 
here. So when you activate the car, heated and cooled seat, back cushion, that comes on the cooled seats at the bottom. Um, it seems to me that they feel that the cooled seat is not really so important. So they, it seems to me that it's kind of like a second thought. That I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed about. As far as I'm concerned, any car this expensive should come with heated and cooled seats standard. It shouldn't be a second thought. All of the functions that control any temperature condition on the seat should automatically be integrated into the car. I mean, this thing is like 60 thousand plus by now you've got heated and cooled seats in kia optimas for thirty thousand dollars so as far as i'm concerned all of this stuff should be standard like dual zone hvac that should be standard at this point dual zone hvac that should have been standard like four or five years ago but now when you're dealing with a sixty thousand dollar car all of that stuff should be standard the uh, navigation should be standard you shouldn't have to really even pay extra for navigation that should be standard in a car like this because you, you're dealing with integrated LCD dashboards and LED dashboards. You're no longer dealing with uh, removable uh, car stereos with with DINs. You know, you're no longer dealing with that. So as far as I'm concerned, all of this stuff should be standard. Every single one of these cars should come with that equipment. Now, as you know, I can't get music into my uh, review because the problem is YouTube senses people if uh, they get somebody else's music that's, you know, into their um, into their uh, video, so I, I can't get music in there. But what I can do is turn it up just up for a second, just to play the speakers and to show you how powerful they are. Okay, and as you can see, the speakers are very very powerful in this car, and this car doesn't even have the the 32 plus piece speaker system from Bose. This car is very powerful even with the base speaker system. So anybody who's buying it with more than that is just trying to show off. Um, basically, this is pretty much what you get out of a standard CT6. And when I say standard, I mean, you know, there's very, very few options added in. But really, when you buy this car, you're buying it for the rear seat. So when you start adding in stuff for the rear seat, and you start adding like, you know, larger wheels, which you don't really need, but if you start adding stuff for the rear seat, you're automatically putting another six or $7,000, maybe even $10,000, because that Bose 32P speaker system is pretty expensive, you know? And right now, most dealers haven't gotten the uh, Bose enhanced speaker system just yet, the Panoray, but um, right now they're still waiting to actually get it. And uh, my, my thing is, anybody who normally would have dropped $100,000 on an S-Class without thinking about it, they're not going to care. They'll just buy it. So I, I've showed you this stuff already. You got the tilt and slide windows. And this is for the, uh, uh, this, this one right here tilts the actual window. And one of these up here actually controls the window shade so that you can do these things independently. So this is what you're looking at. And the question ultimately is, does this car make more sense than the XTS? Is this selling well? It just uh, got here. It just got here. This is our first one. And we're not getting any others for like another three weeks. So we're not selling this one. We're just using it for test drives and display. Okay. okay. This vehicle is in demonstration mode. I don't, this oh, look at the... Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I'd seen that at the, uh, what was it, at the show. Uh-huh. So now when does it switch? It switches when you're not in drive. No, no, this it... stays on the whole time. It stays on the whole this time? This is behind you, yeah. How do you turn it off? You can go to the conventional mirror just with this switch right here. Oh, if you, if you want to. I just wanted to get a, I just wanted to get a nice... What do you uh, want me to tape? Uh, just a road, you know, you can back it up okay. just a little. I usually... Yeah, I just wanted to, you okay. know, just get a good uh, look at the. See what it does? It captures what's behind you the whole time, and it just keeps it running. That's pretty crazy. But there's no way to turn that off. No, you just do like that. Oh, you and it's a regular oh. mirror then. You could switch. But it's a mirror. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's a regular. So it's mirror. either so you push this, a T, and it turns you know, okay. and you push a that digital and version it on. of what's oh, behind it. you, or just the regular mirror. That's really oh, that's all dope. it is. That's pretty cool. That yeah. Cool. Yeah, I guess in a couple of years, all of them will have this. It's you see a lot more, but it makes you know things that are directly behind you. They it, they're closer than they appear. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, this have oh, yes, it, it does. does. Oh. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, just keep one. I'm just gonna go around. Okay. Just wanted to see how how much better these uh these engines got. So this one's the 3.0. 3.6. 3.6. This is a 3.6. Mm-hmm. Oh. You have a 3.6 liter V6. So it's basically, it's like the same engine. I, I feel that thing that the XTS had where it kicks you if uh, somebody's near you. This has that too. Okay. We get ready to turn around. So, uh, yeah, it's smooth, right? How's it back there? Nice. I guess that kind of gets a little taken. You got to get used to that. Yeah, I had a customer that, that didn't that, like when it. When you at look all up, it other. looks kind of. Yeah, it's a very strange feeling. That's a very strange feeling, but it did not. It's pretty cool because then you can always just turn it off mm -hmm. and you just focus it back. That's pretty cool. Like yeah. That's pretty awesome. It's V26. crazy this guy he must have had an accident and you're looking right at that yeah. you know his <laughs> his bumper because the camera's in the right that's, but meanwhile he's about five weird. feet behind <laughs> us that's that's the one drawback that's kind of weird i like that though it's, it's, it's like you're staring right into his uh yeah hook. Wow. yeah you can't even see that if you look back there right you can't see the space between the cars oh. How much space is, is there behind me? Uh, you got it's a, quite it's a, it's a lot, bit. right? It's yeah, a lot of leg space back there. I'm just getting a feel for it because you know you know they're supposed to be making new products soon because they they have one of these coming from China with uh, plug-in. Yeah, CT6 hybrid. Yeah. It's on the website under the uh, concept mm -hmm. cars right now. I was just looking, you, you notice that there's heated and cooled seat things next to you mm. on the door. I just, yeah. oh boy. See, yeah. you, your car has the blind zone. That's what it looks like when it lights up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the STS didn't have that. See, now you get all the new stuff. Yeah, but I, I told you tomorrow I'm leaving for uh, Colorado, so I'm going to see prototype cars when I go there. What, so. what manufacturer? Uh, all the domestics and a couple of the foreigns. So, wow. Yeah, and they, things you don't know exist yet, you know? Prototypes. That's awesome. All prototypes. How'd yeah. you get into that? You're not allowed to take photos, not allowed to take well, video. You, you yeah, know what well, it was? It was sense. because I bought a 12 SRT, and it was a very small target demographic. Yeah. They told me specifically that car qualified me for it, so they're paying for the flight, they're paying for a hotel stay. Um, That's awesome. And they give you 250 bucks for your trouble, right? Yeah. And would you you have to take a bunch of surveys and stuff probably about the cars yeah, and have what they're going to give you an iPad and you have to walk around with it making notes. Wow. Yeah. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that Is there a track? A uh, yeah. Assume? Yeah. You're going to test drive them and uh, basically sit in them, feel, see how they feel and this, that and the other, write down because the, they're prototypes. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping the Model 3 will be there. Yeah, I'm almost done. I'm hoping that uh, Tesla Model 3 will be there. You know, but they're because that that's uh, still in prototype phase. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Oh, 
it says fuel yes, loss, so somebody's gonna have to <laughs> gas it up. Gas. All right. You'll park it. Where you want me? To I'll park it. it right here. It's fine. Okay. There's the new car. Okay. <laughs> All right. Little headroom. Yep. You can get out. It's a big car. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, is she out? Big freaking car. It really does handle just like a boat. does handle exactly like it looks so everybody who makes all those jokes about American cars not being able to turn yeah well this basically is that pretty really really pretty but it is a boat and it has a v6 rather than a v8 they should put that supercharged LT4 up in there <laughs> 